I apologize. I'm not sure if that was myself. I'm not sure if it was it was Sophie, but I definitely had to had to bring it back because I definitely want my guest on. Uh Sophie. We're gonna try it again. Again, A Rich, Akeem Richens. Welcome to Trendsetters. If you don't know me, get to know me. We gonna hit Sophie right back. Add her back on discussion about our, our team, the Buffalo Bills, and how she feels about the process thus far. Hey. Hey. Let's try hey, it again. Gotcha. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I, I, I got you. I think that was me. I think that was me. But we're going to keep it going. Getting back to the question. How do you feel about the process thus far? Do you believe in the process that yes, I do. Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean is implemented? Go ahead. Um, I'm glad they got rid of Tyrod Taylor. Like they're they're they mean <laughs> business. Like we want to win and we want to win now. So I'm pretty confident that we will get the people that we need. Okay. Okay. Now speaking of Tyrod Taylor, is obviously you're not a fan. You wasn't no. a fan of him. I just seen Not yesterday. I just seen yesterday the pro day from one of the quarterbacks that could be on our radar, Lamar Jackson. Do you have any thoughts about the Louisville quarterback, Lamar Jackson? Do you think he's a fit? He can possibly be a fit for the Buffalo Bills, or you just you just see uh, Lamar Jackson as another Tyrod Taylor 2.0? I honestly, I know we did discuss this. I honestly think he's a Tyrod Taylor 2.0. I do like his athleticism, but I don't think he's a good fit for our team. Okay. That, hey, there you heard it. There you heard it. We we ha we having a lot of talks about quarterbacks. Obviously, it's still a month, a month left before the draft. We're going to have a lot more talks about the quarterbacks, but I don't think this is the time <laughs> necessarily to get in that quarterback uh, situation. But I did want to get your – your your brief thoughts on a Lamar Jackson. But moving on to the rest of our Buffalo Bills team offensively and defensively, where do you think or where do you where would you advise our brass to improve on uh as far as skill positions on the offensive side and defensive side of the ball? Starting with offensively first. Wide receiver. Um, I actually think we're thin at wide receiver. I mean we don't have like top names, but I think that we can improve there. You think we can improve our wide receiver? So you're not a believer in our in our signing of Kaylin Clay? He's back with the Buffalo Bills on his second go around. You just you're not a, you're not a believer. You think we need more polished receivers? You're not on the same radar with Pierre, who feels that we are good at the wide receiver position. I think we need help at wide receiver. Um, KB, um, I don't necessarily see him as a superstar as of right now. Um, I know he hey. did well in Carolina but we haven't got to see him shine as a Buffalo Bill. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm glad you brought up Kelvin Benjamin. A lot of people have their opinions on KB. He, is he a superstar? Is he, a, is he a, uh, uh, an above-average receiver? What type of player is he? Me personally feel that KB is a, is a very good receiver, but I don't think he's on that superstar level as of yet. I believe that his durability is, is is an issue, and superstars are usually available most of the time. When I think about superstars, I think about an Antonio Brown. I think about a Julio Jones. Mm -hmm. I think about uh, guys of that nature, A.J. Green, borderline superstar. I mean, I believe A.J. Green makes Andy Dalton look like a better quarterback than what he actually is. So when I think of superstar, I definitely believe that the players that I name, Odell Beckham Jr., those type of players, those type of skill sets are superstars. And even though Kelvin Benjamin is a big physical presence, I don't think he's at that superstar level just yet. And he's been battling a lot of injuries as of late. Mm -hmm. He's been battling injuries with Carolina. He came over to the Bills. He's been battling injuries. So I believe that he's on the cusp, but he's definitely not there yet. Now, besides Akeem, wide what, receiver. What bothers me is um, he did have some good plays for us, and I know that they were just going through the rules about changing about the touchdowns because I know for a fact that touchdown in New England, that should have counted. That yes. should have counted. 
that definitely that definitely was a catch. I don't take nothing away from that. I don't know how they did not view that as a catch. This is why I'm kind of feeling like the Patriots are giving it, it, giving a little money here and there. I don't, it makes me wonder because when you review it on camera, it's, it's an obvious catch. But when the when the ref said that it wasn't a catch, we are playing the New England Patriots. It didn't surprise me at all. It really didn't. Getting to, he clearly he clearly had both his feet down in the very corner of the field. Clearly. Definitely. And to this day, it bothers me. Now, before I get off the wide receiver talk, I just want to throw one more question at you in terms of our wide receivers, more specifically Kelvin Benjamin. Who is better, in your opinion, Kelvin Benjamin or Sammy Watkins? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, Tough one. (laughs) Tough one. Um, I'll I'll start off, and maybe you could chime in after I start off. I believe Sammy Watkins is the more talented player. I believe he has the more he has more physical gifts, more physical traits that defensive defenses and defensive coordinators uh, probably fear. But at the same time, Kelvin Benjamin has put together that production. He's put the, he's put together some solid seasons. Uh, when he was in Carolina, he seemed like his last season and coming over to the Buffalo Bills, he has struggled a little bit. But I think Kelvin Benjamin, Sammy Watkins, in my opinion, different skill sets, but I would give him a tie right now. So what you think about that? I absolutely agree. I mean, they're both um, injury prone for sure. Um, but we've only seen probably one good season with Sammy Watkins before he got hurt, even though he's not on the team anymore. But um he has his moments where he shines when he's on the field and he's like, when I want the ball, give me the ball. <laughs> and, right. um, but like I said, with KB with when we had Tyrod Taylor, we didn't really see a lot from him and he's been having those lagging knee injuries. So he really hasn't been productive for us thus far, but since we have the off season, I am really confident that we might see a little bit more of him this season. Yeah. And, and if we see a little bit more KB, if he can stay relatively healthy, and if he's if his knee turns out pans out to be okay, I think he's going to be a beast. If his knee is not healthy, I'm concerned. We're talking about a six five receiver who is not exactly. necessarily not necessarily known for separating from cornerbacks. He uses his size and his physical gifts to to muscle guys for the ball. So that knee has to be healthy to get the best production out of Kelvin Benjamin, in my opinion. Um, moving on. Moving on a little bit, we're going to drift away from the receiver talk a little bit. Let's talk about our offensive line. We was rated six in the NFL in rushing this past year. Uh, Eric Wood is now retired. Cordy Glenn is now with the Cincinnati Bengals. Are you concerned with our offensive line? Do you think that need upgrading or are we just fine at that position? We need help, Akeem. <laughs> um, the... <laughs> The people that we sign for our O-line really don't know much about them, and every source that I've read, they have they have not been well, not been good. So um, okay. I really think that we need help on our line for sure. Okay. I think you're talking about uh, the, the guy that was formerly with the Cincinnati Bengals, yeah. Bordine, and the other yeah. guy, Newhouse, from, from the Oakland Raiders. I mm-hmm. haven't heard good reviews uh, from – from either organizations, when I uh, dabble on Twitter, it seems like the fans of the Raiders and Cincinnati Bengals are thrilled that they're off their teams, <laughs> respectively. So that may not be a good thing for us. I'm hoping with a, a schematic change and a change of scenery, maybe it can result in some better play. But it's, it's yet to be determined. Who knows? How you feel about Eric Wood and the loss of Eric Wood? What, do you, what did you feel about Eric Wood and his play? Me personally, I felt uh, Eric Wood was a little overrated. I I would agree, but as a player as a whole, um, with his leadership in the locker room, he was definitely one of one of our best assets, I believe. And it was really sad that he announced that he was retiring because of that injury. I think we're okay. gonna so you, hurt without him so you, a little bit. I think. Okay. Okay. So it was it was it was it was a kind of a sad day for you when Eric Wood retired. Mm-hmm. Fair to say. Okay, yes. there's nothing wrong with that. How do you feel about his possible re- uh, replacement, Ryan Groy? Oh, I'm very confident with him. He, When he stepped up, um, I, it was last year when Eric Wood broke his leg, correct? He played really well when he, yes. was, when he was out, and I was very impressed. 
and I'm confident that he'll continue doing well this season for us. I'm, I really do like him. You okay? So you like Ryan, you like Ryan Groy. Yeah. You like Ryan mm-hmm. Groy. There's nothing wrong with that. Where would you? We have two first round picks. We're going to assume just for this con- just for this conversation that we keep all our picks. We have two first round picks. We have two second round picks, two third round picks, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth. Where do you think, what round would you address uh, the offensive line situation? Um, definitely wide receiver. Okay, definitely wide receiver. Definitely mm-hmm. wide receiver. You would fix, you would fix uh, in the draft, you would definitely go wide receiver. Would you select an offensive lineman somewhere in that draft? Yes. Definitely. Um, definitely. Where? What round do you think maybe we would get one from? Uh, it's it's tough to say. Well, last year they said the offensive line class was relatively relatively weak, and we found the De- uh, Deion Dawkins. So just because he's a diamond a in the rough, position, I think definitely a diamond in the rough. So just because the media say or scouts may believe there are certain classes. Uh, that is weak, it doesn't necessarily mean you can't find a good one. So if we keep both second-round picks, I may want to address going after a guard or a tackle in the second round because let's face it, we traded Cordy Glenn. When healthy, Cordy Glenn was our best offensive lineman. For sure. Richie Richie Incognito is is a, a very good offensive lineman. He probably benefited from actually sitting out a year because of his bully scandal. He probably benefited for now, but at the end of the day, Richie Incognito is 35 years old. I don't mm-hmm. know what new house in Bordon gives me. I know Jordan Mills is, is average to the below average at best, and who knows what we're going to get out of John Miller nowadays with this new scheme. So I would definitely go into second round, assuming that we have both picks and probably address that offensive line situation. And I would not be surprised if we stay at 12. We have a lot of holes to fill. I'm actually content where we are right now. But I'm not sure how much we would have to give up if um, we want to move to um, pick number two in the first round. Because I, right, um, right. I know that they've been talking about maybe, you know, doing some trade work with the Giants. Um, I'm – not sure, but I'd, I'd be content staying at, at number 12. You'll be, hey, I, it's nothing wrong with that. And I believe it's, uh, we're, I, I believe we're not going to make a move until draft day. It's not going to be no pre draft moves where you're going to see before the draft the, uh, the Bills trade up with the Giants for the number two overall pick. I believe if we're going to make a move and move up in the draft, we're going to wait to draft day. We're going to see where certain guys fall. I'm, I'm noticing we having a, a multiple visits, multiple workouts for Baker Mayfield. So depending on how this quarterback situation falls, who goes where, I believe we can possibly move up then in the draft with Tampa Bay Buccaneers at seven, with the Raiders at eight. Teams that's not QB needed at the time where we can get our guy and not give up as much uh, draft capital as well. So I think that's what we ultimately going to do in the draft. But again, you never know. There, Sophie. Yeah, um, and I'm not, and okay. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe like round two that we would get a quarterback. Because look at Derek Carr, uh, I believe he was a second round pick, and so was Drew Brees. Yes. And look at them now, and they're elite yes. quarterbacks. Yes. And, but the draft, yes. you never know. So, but I really See, think wide receiver and linebacker is what we need because our, our defense, we need to tighten that up. Okay, so getting transitioning over to the defensive side of the ball, you feel that, that our weak point is at the linebacker position. You're not satisfied mm-hmm. with what we have right now, correct? Well, I know we signed Ramon Humber. I know he's getting up there in age two, and so is Lorenzo Alexander. I don't believe right. he – did as well as he did the prior season, but he wasn't bad. Right, right. So, I mean, I think – I personally think Zoe Alexander saved his job in the playoffs. He came out and he balled out against the Jacksonville Jaguars. He didn't have the same season that he did the year before with Rex Ryan, 
probably because of, of a schematic fit. Rich Ryan running a four three defense, a three four defense. We moved it, transitioning over to a four three defense. But I believe he saved his job. He saved the spot on the Bills roster because, but by his performance against the Jacksonville Jaguars, where he balled out. Who would you draft at linebacker, Sophie? Um, I really like Shaquem Griffin. Um, I believe at the combine he, I think he ran a four point three eight, and I believe that's probably one of the fastest times ever recorded at the combine for a linebacker. And he's got a lot of versatility, and um, I believe he does not have a hand, and he's got a prosthetic hand, and um, he can do anything just like anyone else can. And I really, really think he'd be a good fit for us. Hey, I, I, I'm not mad at that one, but I really, really, really do like him. Hey, I like Shaquem Griffin as well. And I, me personally, I don't give a damn if he doesn't have a hand. <laughs> Can you perform without that hand? Can you be productive? I see Shaquem Griffin perform better with his one hand than players that's uh, fully healthy. So I don't discriminate. Can you come and play? Can you come and be productive? And it seems as if Shaquille, Shaquille Griffin been productive with the University of Central Florida, he's come out and had a remarkable combine. So I'm not totally against him at all. I would be ecstatic for us to draft a Griffin in a in a second, maybe third round. I, I would love that pick. For sure. Now, talking about, we're going to revert back over to what you said prior. You talked about your content at staying at 12. Now, when a lot of people hear being content, staying somewhere, it, it, it kind of causes an uproar. It's like, how much years are the Buffalo Bills going to be content? How much years are the Buffalo Bills going to settle for a J.P. Lossman? The last time the Buffalo Bills was content, Ben Roethlisberger went by, Philip Rivers went by, Eli Manning went by, and we ended up with J.P. Lossman. So how do you feel about the people that would say to you, why would you be content when we've been through this a number of times before? Why don't, why should we try something different? Well, I, I, I know I'm, I'm afraid of like what people would say. Cause I know a lot of people aren't very happy with me right now about staying at 12. No, but, never be afraid. Never be afraid. Um, we all have opinions. And but look what I know I'm talking about the past, but look what happened with EJ Manuel. We got him the first round. I'm not exactly sure where in the first round we got him. He did not right. do well with but us at all. Pick. Right, right. I, and I totally agree. I don't want to go through so that up. again either, you know. So <laughs> right. you never know. Right. You just never know with anyone. Hey, and you're exactly right. You never know. EJ Manuel was selected in the first round, 16th overall. We traded back from 9 to 16. We uh, uh, got an extra pick or two, and we ended up selecting EJ Manuel with our first round pick. Now, that's an excellent point I bring there because even though a lot of people want to be aggressive and a lot of people want to get their guy, it's not necessarily a, f a known fact that just because you move up that he's going to be that guy. <laughs> it's not a known fact if you move in the top 10, he's going to be that franchise quarterback. So I could see it definitely on both sides of the spectrum. I definitely can see that. M moving on a little bit. Rex Ryan, he has some things to say about our team, the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I'm not going to quote him, but to say the least, he said we didn't necessarily have, have that playoff roster. We, de we didn't do well statistically, but we ended up making the playoffs anyway. So mm -hmm. being that we didn't do well statistically, but end up making the playoffs, what does that say about Rex Ryan as a head coach? How, how did you feel about Rex Ryan and his tenure as a head coach and the comparisons to Rex Ryan and Sean McDermott? Uh, Rex Ryan, I believe he wanted to be the buddy for everybody on the team. And he... Him and Sean McDermott, there's no comparison at all. Like Sean McDermott is is strict and he he wants to 
he wants everyone to do well on the team. It seemed like Rex Ryan was more laid back, and and, and for him to do a three four defense seemed to be really confusing to people too. And um, I think he just wanted to be the buddy for everybody on the team and just wasn't as strict at all like Sean McDermott is. So that's Definitely, my opinion. Hey, and, I, and that's a good assessment. Uh, Sean McDermott, he brought over a different change. A lot of people like to use the word culture, and a lot of people think the word culture is overblown. I don't think the word culture is overblown. It's just how are you going to look at the culture? With Rex Ryan – we had a lot of penalties, offensively, defensively, on special teams, personal fouls. We just happened to have a lot of penalties from a week-in, a week-out basis. Now, some of that is because of Jerry Hughes, and some of that is because the players we have on the team, of course. But once Sean McDermott came over, we seen a lot of them penalties we didn't get as much it's, it's under his coaching regime his first year. Drastic change, drastic change, and that's what I that when I think about culture, that's what I think about. I think about the the discipline that Sean McDermott brought to the forefront, brought to our organization, brought to our team. So that's definitely something that I admire and I appreciate from Sean McDermott. <clears throat> now, you spoke about wide receivers, Miss Sophie. Mm -hmm. You think that. We need to get better at the wide receiver position. Mm -hmm. The New York Giants has been talking about possibly trading Odell Beckham Jr. I don't. I How do not do want him here. No. <laughs> so you know where I was going with this. You don't want Odell, Be Odell Beckham Jr. He's one of the top three receivers in the game, but you don't want him. Why? Uh... <laughs> He's injury prone, and he doesn't fit the the character set that Sean McDermott would want on our team. He doesn't fit the character set. Now we seen what happened with Zay Jones. We seen we yeah. seen Zay Jones running around with his brother butt naked, fighting butt butt naked. <laughs> that yeah. doesn't uh that doesn't really uh. Talk we don't about know what, what happened culture. with that. So. The, hey. You're absolutely right. We don't know what happened with that. We do, we all we know is what we've seen. We see a guy butt ass naked fighting his little brother, but we don't know that what happened behind that. So I understand uh, your take on that. Zay Jones again is a young guy. Uh, how do you feel about Zay Jones the player? I really do like him though. Like we all didn't know that he had an injury during the season. And that probably contributed to why he kept dropping all those balls during the season. So it was a shoulder injury, correct? I believe so. I believe was it a shoulder injury? I know he had a knee. I know he got injured against the Jets one time as well. He had a little knee injury. He's been he was banged up this season a little bit. Yeah. And we didn't we didn't know that. So um we'll see what happens. I mean Talk I I'm He's a fighter, in my opinion, I guess, because he, he played all those games when he was not 100%. Right, right. Now, we had <clears throat> we had opportunity in last year's draft. I'm going to get some fans, uh, some of the people's opinion as well. We had okay. opportunity in last year's draft to select <laughs> other receivers. Other receivers was there for the taking. Juju Smith-Schuster for the mm -hmm. Pittsburgh Steelers was there. We had other receivers there as well. I believe... We drafted Zay Jones because we implemented his his wide receivers coach from ECU over to the Buffalo Bills in the same position as a wide receiver coach. Now his wide receiver coach went over to the Chargers. Mm -hmm. Now that he's over with the Chargers, uh, Zay Jones wide receivers coach, do you regret drafting a Zay Jones or you're still happy with him, you're still comfortable with him and you think he could progress? I actually can't answer that question. I'm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty-fifty on that. Yeah. Oh, hey, really hey. There's nothing wrong with that. No. Nope. Hey, there, there's, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I still have promise and hope for Zay Jones. I believe at the same time last year we drafted him because we wanted to, we wanted to have that camaraderie amongst certain teams and certain players, 
It seemed like uh, Sean McDermott was following a certain philosophy and getting certain guys that he's know he knows he's comfortable with and that knows each other. And who knows if we would have drafted Zay Jones if we didn't have that wide receiver coach. But you never know. I'm not uh, giving up on Zay Jones just yet. There's some people that have, but I'm not giving up on Zay just yet. I think he could still be a productive football player in this mm -hmm. league. Moving on, I'm I'm breaking, I'm running through positions. I'm putting you on the spot. You are doing an excellent job, by the way. I appreciate you uh, coming on to to help me to guide uh, guide me through this thing. <laughs> you're the Thank first you. woman on my show. I believe you're the first woman on any show from the Bills uh, Fanatics family. So again, I really appreciate you, and I know I'm hitting you with questions. This is not scripted, people. This is not scripted. She comes on. She don't know what the hell I'm going to say. And she's taking it like a champ. So moving on. The running back position. LaShawn McCoy, 30-year-old running back. He was the most productive player on our team, but he's getting there. He's getting up there in age. He has high mileage. What is your stance on Shady McCoy? Are you, are you the type that's going to keep him? Let's keep Shady McCoy. He's been productive for us. Or are you the type that's going to say, you know what? I like Shady McCoy, but we can get another running back that, that did what he has done. Let's get younger at the position if the price is right. Give me your thoughts on Shady McCoy. I want to keep him. He's been, he's been very productive. Who cares if he's got high mileage? If he can play at a high level, let's keep him. And, you, and he loves Buffalo. I don't see him going anywhere unless we're that desperate. Hey, hey, I'm not mad at that stance at all. I actually feel the same way. If a guy is producing, if a guy can be productive, I don't give a damn how old you are. Mm -hmm. Can you play? Can you still produce? Can you still produce at a high level? And I think Sh uh, Shady McCoy fits that bill in, in terms of producing at a high level, even at his age where people would say, uh, Shady McCoy uh, is at the age where he would start regressing. Now, let me throw a, another question at you in regarding okay. Shady McCoy. We need a franchise quarterback. Yes, we do. <laughs> we need that franchise guy. If a team like the New York Giants, like the Oakland Raiders, like Tampa Bay Buccaneers is on the clock, and we have a particular guy that we've honed in on and we really want. And that particular team says, you know what? You want this pick? We'll give you this pick. But you have to give me Shady McCoy and multiple picks in return. Would you trade Shady McCoy to get your franchise quarterback? I don't think I would. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? That's very interesting. That's very interesting. You're, that goes to show me that you're very loyal to your productive players. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Me personally, if we love a guy, it's a quarterback's league. If we love a certain guy, if we love a particular guy, I love Shady McCoy. He's one of my favorite players even before he became a Buffalo Bill. I would really uh, seriously think about making that move. Because quarterbacks... How much, how much would we lose, though, if we were to do that? How much would we have to lose? That's what, that's that, what worries me the most. That, and that's an excellent question. Shady, if, we, if they want Shady McCoy, I'm assuming they may want most of our, both our first-round picks as well. Let's throw both of our first-round picks. Let's throw in 12. Let's throw in 22. And let's throw in Shady McCoy to move up to pick number seven. That's probably what we would have to give up. Uh, to get our franchise quarterback. Would you make that move? I don't I don't know. I'm it's a lot there's a lot to give up. It's a, it's definitely a lot to give up. I would say one thing. I would seriously think about making the move, but if you make that move, you better hit on that damn quarterback. Exactly. <laughs> he better be that guy for the next five to ten years. You better hit on that guy. That's just how I feel about it. Now, before we get out of here, we're talking about quarterbacks. 
What about the mm-hmm. quarterbacks we already have on the team? Do you like any of these uh, guys that we have already? A.J. McCarron, uh, I don't know if you've seen much of A.J. He's played in spurts in 2015. He played in a playoff game and won. He, pl- uh, he, played, he played in a playoff game against, against the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if they won, but he played, and he should have won. And then we have Nathan, Nate Peterman, who we drafted in the fifth round last year. How do you feel about Nate Peterman? Any confidence well, in him at all? Um, I was eating my words after those five interceptions, but not all of them were his fault in that game. Um, I wanted to see right. more of him, and I honestly think that he played better than Tyrod Taylor during our preseason. Hey, I, hey, I'm not mad at that at all. I think he outplayed Tyrod Taylor as well. Now, what, what the coaches would say, the coaches would say they didn't throw the entire playbook out. They ran a very bland, very vanilla offense. So that's why they didn't look in deep, in too deep, as far as uh, Nathan Peterman outplaying Tyrod Taylor because of the vanilla offense they was running throughout the preseason. So I believe that's why our coaching staff uh, – didn't implement Nathan Peterman from day one. That's just that's just my opinion. What are the people saying? I'm not good at looking at the comments and talking. Hey, so. hey, I, the, the, the podcast on Trendsetters, I don't necessarily look at uh, people comments. I usually get back into the group and go live on the group and then address comments that way. But sometimes I do like to feed in and, and, and get certain feedback, and maybe that feedback can give me some questions to ask you. So shout out Sharif Cole, shout out Patrick, James Butler, what's going on? Leroy Winslow, what's going on? Uh, Debbie, how you doing, Debbie? Uh, just just shouting out all the fans. We appreciate everybody coming on, Trendsetters, today. Uh, that half an hour, it's been about 32 minutes, Sophie. It's oh, been wow. about 32 like minutes. That. I'm telling you, what once you get into the groove, once you start flying through certain topics and, and talking about things that interest us and interest the people, the time goes by just like that. So anything else you want to say before we get out of here? I just want to thank you for having me on, and I feel privileged to be the first woman to be a part of the show and I'd like to continue that and see more hey, people definitely. interact. Yep. Definitely. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate you. I'm honored to to – co-host trendsetters episode four with you i really appreciate you you're the first woman i ever had the first guest as a woman i ever had on my show so it's been an honor for me i really appreciate you and again everybody every other week i'm gonna start interacting i'm gonna start getting more people on to talk about our team because we're not the only ones uh bills fanatics uh the group we're not the only ones that have opinions we're not the only ones that have voices I want everybody to be heard. A lot of us know exactly what we're talking about. A lot of us know the game, and we just have to get on that platform and that forefront to express the knowledge that we do have. So I'm definitely going to be doing more of this. Uh, Sophie, I really appreciate you. I really appreciate the time that you took out to come join me in this episode, in this podcast. And we definitely got to do this again. We definitely oh, going to sure. do more of this. I, I'm not as nervous now, and it, it was awesome, and everyone's been wonderful. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I really appreciate you, man. I really appreciate you. Again, this is A. Rich, Akeem Richens, with Sophie, my special guest. It's been Trendsetters. Once again, if you don't know me, get to know me. And I'll see you next week. Until see next ya. time.